modern day medicine, we have a specialist for every physical need and malady. Actually, in Scripture, when we look a little deeper, we will find that there are specialists pertaining to our spiritual need. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Torah, day number two, the Torah portion, Mitzorah. Yesterday, we read from Leviticus, chapter number 14, several verses describing the process by which the one who is a Metzora, a Metzora being the one who has Sarat, erroneously translated as leprosy in most of our translations and our, our versions. It's not leprosy as is the classic Hansen's disease model. Rather, this is something unique and quite a bit different. Um, we also yesterday talked about Yeshua encountering a Metzora in Mark chapter number one, beginning with verse number 40. So if you have text and would like to get back to that, go back then with me to Mark chapter one, verse 40, where we read about the leper or the Metzora that came to him, calling upon him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you want to, you can make me clean. And Yeshua, having compassion upon him, said, I want to. I want to take care of this for you. And then he touched him. Now, I mentioned yesterday briefly about kingly authority. The Sarat, this Metzora guy, he comes to Yeshua, to the one possessing kingly authority, and he's asking not just for healing or for cleansing, but he's asking for a change of status. What did he say? He said, you were able to make me clean. At present, sir, I am unclean. You can make me clean. That is, you have the authority, I see, to change my status. Now, the unclean status, obviously, is a very inconvenient thing. It's a very compromising thing. It's a very debilitating thing. Life for him could never return to any, any resemblance of normal until the status changed. Yeshua said, I want to change your status. And I would change your status by cleansing you. Now, Yeshua touches this man and effects a change in his status. But the man, having been cleansed, is still not allowed to go back into the community until he's been examined by the priest. Why? Because it was the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, that declared him unclean, and it is their authority to not only teach clean and unclean, uh, tahor and tameh, but also to declare it over one's particular situation. So Yeshua says, go show yourself to the priest and make that offering that is required of you. That's the offering that we read about in Leviticus, Vigra, chapter number 14. Go get two turtle doves and some cedar, etc., and go to the priest and let him do the ritual that declares you clean. And you have to shave off your hair and wash your body. You can go back in the camp. You have to stay outside of your home for seven days. Then there's some further steps that you will take before you're allowed to come home. So even when Yeshua fixes our status, changes our status, it doesn't mean that everything is suddenly repaired, that all relationships are suddenly restored, that all issues are suddenly resolved. There is still a process. But the process is engaged then by one who no longer has the malady. When someone is born again, 
Previously, their life has caused a lot of upheaval and a lot of issues and problems for those that know him or her. They come saying, I'm born again. I, I, I've been saved. My life has changed. Well, that's wonderful. Let's see how it works. And people are going to watch for a while to see where is the evidence of that. And I understand that. And the person who's had the great renewal is very enthused and very ecstatic and filled with joy, but you got to walk it out. It has to be more than just an emotional encounter where you were sorry for some things and cried about it. There has to be an inward new birth, an inward spiritual change, and that needs to be permanently displayed. Sometimes we might look at folks and think, hey, were you ever really born again? Your attitude, your words, and your actions really don't declare as much. We'll go on. So there is an understanding that while the, the priesthood had the authority to declare clean and unclean, one has uh, Sarat, one is now cleansed from Sarat. It is in the authority of a king to do something more. The king can defend his city. He can pardon from their crimes. He can construct and, and engage in kingdom building. He can heal. He can alleviate debt. Yeshua is acting here in kingly authority. The man recognized kingly authority is what I need. Now, listen to what happens here. He says in verse 44, Go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what, Messiah, uh, what Moshe offered as a witness to them. A witness of what? A witness that one with kingly authority has cleansed you. And all of the Tanakh, that is all of what, was, what is called the Old Testament, and all of that, there were only two that were actually cleansed of their Sarat. That was Naaman and Miriam, the sister of Moshe. It was an extremely rare thing to see someone healed of this malady. This man was, and Yeshua said, go tell the priest Show them yourself. They have declared you unclean, a metzora. Let them now pronounce you clean and then offer in obedience to Moshe's commands what is required of you as a witness. Somebody with kingly Messiah authority is in the midst of us. Now, let's also examine then this last verse Yeshua says to the man, watch your mouth, watch your testimony. Don't go telling everybody you know about this. Keep this on the lowdown. Keep it quiet. But the man, and I understand his excitement. I get his enthusiasm, but he went and told everybody so much that the fame of Yeshua highly increased and Yeshua couldn't even walk openly anymore. Yeshua was isolated. It's interesting. Yeshua heals one who was quarantined and isolated, and then by result of that, himself now becomes isolated and quarantined to some degree. And the issue is the man whose mouth probably was the root of his initial malady and issue he hasn't learned to control it yet. And so he goes blabbing, 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 and he's causing a problem in disobedience to what Yeshua said to do. We are human beings, and we prove that quite often. And so we get delivered, we get healed, we get free, our chains are broken, our cells are open, and we, we find this wonderful place in Messiah and then when it comes to following his instructions, we struggle. And what do we do? 
We cause more problems for ourselves than those that are around us. We got to walk it out. We have to walk it out. <laughs> more tomorrow. Until then, shalom. Mm-hmm.